Good evening. I'd like to take and call the Thursday, September 6th, Berlin Select Board to order. Uh, to my left is Wayne Lamberton. To my right is Jeremy Hansen, Angelina Caprone, and I'm Brad Town. With us also is Diane Isabel, our town treasurer, and Dana Hadley, our town administrator. And additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? Yes, I do have a few items that I would like to add to the agenda. Um, I'd like to add a discussion on changing the meeting day for the select board. That was at the request of select board member Capron. I would also like to add um, a discussion and perhaps approval of an alternate signer uh, for when we request reimbursement on the sewer and water interim financing. And I also have would it like to ask the liquor board to convene to approve a catering license? Okay. And public comment. Hearing none, treasurer support, are you? Uh, the pre audit was on August 27th. Uh, the auditors are here for the morning. I already sent a lot of the information to them uh, a couple days before, so it only took about three hours for them to do the pre-audit. Did uh, Linda yes, reach out they to did. you? Yes, they did. Okay. Uh, the audit itself will be on October and October, uh, October 2nd and 3rd. And that's all I've got. Okay. Um, still looking at those. Uh, Mr. Grenier. Yes. You're up. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, I'm mostly here to answer questions that you folks might have, but uh, also to bring you up to date on the culvert replacement on Mirror Lake Road. Um, we started about almost a year ago um, talking about replacing that culvert, and then over the winter it uh, finally collapsed, and you've had the road closed for a while now. Um, we were hired to design our culvert replacement and also apply to the state for a grant to help replace that culvert. Um, we did help Dana apply for that and we received a grant to help replace yeah. some of the cost. I can't remember the total amount. Um, the total grant amount is 175000 or 90% of the of what we spent. Okay. So uh, we proceeded with a survey of the area, uh, worked to develop a, a um, design for a larger culvert replacement uh, following the guidelines of VTRAN since it was the state grant we applied for, we had to follow those standards. Um, the recommendation was a 22 foot wide open arch culvert, um, about six feet, six and a half feet high. Um, I started with uh, supply companies looking at different size culverts and uh, decided to use Contact which is a company that all throughout New England, we use many, many times, and a very good reputation. Um, they supplied a design that we worked around, and uh, at the beginning of August, we put that project out to bid. And um, we had six, we had seven contractors we sent the information to. We had three local, uh, fairly local contractors bid on the project, and we had uh, three, three results. Um, I sent that to Dana. I don't know if you want it announced or what, but... Well, I think and w we'd be probably waiting for your recommendation, but we okay. did receive three bids, which is now public. Yep. The Boys Construction, 222, 825, mm -hmm. Capital Earth Moving, 144, 716, and Percy Excavation, 103, 357, 50 cents. Correct. Um, so... That is the cost of the construction. The culvert you have previously purchased it right. is actually due to be delivered in one day. Right, and I explained to you about what we did with the culvert last time. So you're saying that, that in that case, we're expecting the project to come in at 208 to 98. Yes. Okay. Um, so as far as the um, granting the bid, you're recommending to the board that they grant the bid to a, to a vendor? Correct. Okay. 
I'm recommending to purchase the excavation okay. based on their bid, review of the bid, and um, they have supplied a bond for their work um, as a requirement. And um, I've done multiple projects with them in the town of Stowe. Uh, they've worked at Norwich University, um, town of Waitsfield. Uh, they've been around for a long time, and luckily, everybody that came to the bid um, took a bid information, was all very qualified. The three that put in prices were eminently qualified, and I feel like you received a very good price. Okay, I did not put that on. I didn't know this when I was making the agenda up, so I would have to put it on for next time to have you vote on that, um, which would be September 17th, I think. Could the board make a recommendation? Are you allowed to sign the if they contract. authorize me to. Okay. Um, it, it, the would, culvert's due to be delivered on Monday. When would you like to start? As soon as possible. Next week would be great. Culvert's to be delivered. I believe Percy is ready to go. Um, usually this time of the weather is, time of the year is fairly dry. Um, the push farther we push into October and even into November, we can start to get freezing and also more rain. I'd like to do it at the driest time possible. Set up a special select board meeting Monday. Do we, do we need to, though? Because, I mean, we have an item here about the Mirror Lake culvert. Are you comfortable with that? I mean, I guess I, in looking at it, we do have Mirror Lake culvert on the agenda. I feel the need to recuse myself for the obvious reasons. Obvious, obvious reasons. reasons. So, we have enough votes. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think it's going to take and meet the letter of the law, I, I think it will. Right? To have well, I mean, it's, it's our own law that we're following. It's the, the you know, purchasing right. policy. Yeah. So, I guess we can vote on it tonight if you help me out any. I think it's in the best interest of the town to I think it would help us forward. out. You know. yeah. <coughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. <laughs> no, and I, I understand. I, maybe I wasn't clear about that when I, I sent the list. So you need, um, you're going to need someone to sign the contract. Correct. It's okay. a one-page contract. Okay. It's in most cases. Do you have it with you industry. tonight? I don't. Okay. I could send it to you tomorrow. Okay. Or Percy is available to sign it together tomorrow or on Monday or whatever is. Okay. Well, available. if the board would like to authorize me to sign. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I'm the guy who reads all the language in the contract. I would say we would want. To make sure that you're comfortable and or Rob is comfortable with the contract. Well, I pass everything to Rob. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to move that we authorize um, Dana Hadley, town administrator, to sign the contract with Percy subject to review by um, town council. Okay. I can send that to you. If you email me tomorrow morning, I will send it over to our attorney. I need a second. That's you. What would? Take a second. I don't say that. And then you can just talk about it if you have yeah. any, any further discussion. So you're all set with that, Dana? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have, did I send you when we originally did the bid package? Because the contract was in the original bid package. It hasn't changed. Oh, okay. Is that so, probably and, and ha if, Yeah, so has that been reviewed by Rob already? No, it has not. But would you send it to me just for sure I have it? Yeah. yeah. I'll actually, now that I know who the contractor is, and I can fill that part in. Because right now, just a, the contractor and a blank line. Right. So I'll write that up. Um, one thing I want to review with you is it is due to be delivered on Monday. Uh, obviously, Percy's not ready for it yet. They haven't mobilized. Mm -hmm. I've had both cases. I've had the covert pieces and all the hardware left at the site, depending on where the site is. Mm -hmm. Given its location, does it would it be possible to have a site worked out with your highway foreman to have it put behind the fence around the salt shed so yes. that's at least more secure? Yes. I don't think it's going to be there very long. Maybe two weeks at most. We have room. Okay. Who, if that's okay with you folks, who would I speak to about where to put it so it's not in the way of day-to-day -day operation? Uh, it's Tim Day. This is the highway superintendent. Is he four nine clearing out on? He does. Okay. Four nine eight eight four three five is his number. Four eight three five eight four three five. Eight. 
He's on vacation this week, but you could still call him. Um, there is a, a power pole that needs to be moved by Washington Electric Co-op. They confirmed this afternoon that they moved it. Okay. Um, there will be some more work, the transferring of telephone and cable before. It's not 100% it's not in the way, but it's so close that I felt like it should be moved rather than to try to place one of the anchors for the wing wall and have it against the pole. It undermines. And Washington Electric came and looked at it with me and they were like, yeah, we'll move it. So. Well, I'm glad to hear it's moved because highway is going to have to be because I made them go out and do it right away. <laughs> it is moved. And, okay. <laughs> that we got a very quick response time from Washington Electric. Right. Very happy. Right. Um, the following, getting the telephone and cable transferred over and cut could take a little bit longer, but we just got stage one down the poles there. So we'll be pushing them to get those moved. It was my understanding that the, um, the culvert vendor was going to actually drop the culvert in place? What, how the process works is um, the culvert gets delivered, and then they have a traveling assembly crew that goes to different jobs and assembles all the pieces. Um, they will assemble that culvert based on the timeline of Percy opening up the road, getting the pole prepped, the foundation prepped. Um, and so Percy and contact me to talk about when that crew shows up. I would expect in a week or so, maybe two or th possibly three. Um, and then that will need to be set by a crane, which is in Percy's bit there in charge of that. Assembly by contact, actual putting it physically in place, backfilling, compacting, et cetera, is by a contract. So there's a possibility that the the, quip, the uh, pieces of the cult will be there for a couple of weeks at highway? Yes. Okay. And then they'll be pec picked up again by the contractor and brought out to Mirror Lake Road. Okay. All those in favor of having Danis authorized? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Back in when we ordered the culvert, I believe you were authorized by the town to sign to purchase that culvert. I wasn't, but I was so anxious to get the culvert, but okay. I've explained that my, I fell on my sword. I have a new copy of that. What I had you, they sent two copies. The first of the copy was for me to say, yes, this is the correct one, order it, and then you were to also back me up because you were actually paying for it. I gave you the wrong contract to sign. They look exactly identical. I just didn't notice your name on one and mine on the other. Oh. Could I possibly ask you to re-sign the new one? I mean, it's okay. kind of a formality because it's coming here Monday, but they had asked that, <laughs> you know, like you, they were like good about it, and I was just like, yes, I'll get that straight. That's all right with the board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're a little, we're kind of coming. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of on the right A bit. Well, this is pretty exciting. So yeah. It's a re, it's exactly the same as the one that came before, except the name at the top versus this one. Because this one has gone to Rob, so okay. he didn't pick that up. Where would you like me to sign? Oh, that? That, yeah, that yeah. block there. Company name would be against the town of Berlin and your title, etc. So once I send the contract for the work to you, you and attorney review it, then we could set a date to have it signed by you and the purchase representative. Right. I would say at the beginning of next week. things that I had in culvert, delivery, the process for bidding, where it will be delivered. Is there anything else I can answer? I think it's great. I mean, <coughs> if we can get the thing in, it's not in the ground, you know, four weeks from now, before the basics, weather turns, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it would be great. That was our goal. Right. And that's why I was so excited about the culvert, to get it, get it, get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be nice grant. That's <coughs> more huge help. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The board had um, had asked me about the culprit being aluminum, um, so maybe they might be interested in there. I thought that was the best choice. In most of our large oak culverts now, we have switched from galvanized steel or epoxy coated steel to aluminum because it lasts so much longer. Um, 
in the factory, a steel culvert coated with epoxy or galvanized lasts great. But as soon as it's actually assembled, all the pieces rubbing together are scratching and putting the ground, you end up to put a nick in it. You know, they're in the grand scheme of things, a huge 22 foot wide culvert to scratch this long is not a big deal. But <clears throat> overall, um, this culvert, because it's aluminum, will be slightly thicker than it would be if it's steel. But its lifespan is 50 to 75 years in place. I think you'll find that most people are going to that. Um, the galvanized steel is has been traditionally a little bit cheaper, but actually in the last year or so with different overseas uses of steel and prices of steel going up and down, the aluminum and steel are pretty much dead level right now. Um, so I, I always check that with whoever we buy culverts from, and um, aluminum was the recommendation given price, fabrication time, and longevity. So that's what I decided to go with. And I think the reason the question came up is I think it was in our minds that it was a concrete box hole. Right. That's what we were thinking from day one and never had considered an aluminum arch culvert. So that's why the question came up. Large open span culverts, we're going to aluminum now. Concrete box culverts have um, some restriction on how open span they can be. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also extremely heavy and actually right now, the cost to precast them is more expensive than these aluminum assembly mm -hmm. culverts. And I think that but that was why we were so nervous about lead time. Right. Because the concrete box culverts lead time is long time. Yeah. Right. And they're heavy, they're big. So I don't think we're questioning aluminum versus galvanum. No, that's fine. Our I'm happy question, to answer it. I'm right, looking at it every our, time. Our yeah. question was, wow, it's aluminum, not concrete. Right. right. That was a surprise. And we go through that on every design. Does it make is this in some cases, a very steep grade, some really, really tricky spot to get into that has to hold up a lot of weight or retain a big bank. Aluminum is not the way to go. A concrete, you basically buy a concrete bridge in a box and stay right. in place. This is a huge, flat, open spot, easy to get to. I think this is the right choice, both for economy and also for longevity. And how's the concrete going to be put in? Is that prefab or is it? There's no in place? concrete in this process at all. What's the foundation? The foundation is three feet of crushed stone on top of fabric. There is no, and the head walls are aluminum as well. They're bolted together, assembled with tie backs that go under the road. So there are certain applications where a cra concrete cradle head wall is required to hold that aluminum or steel culvert in place. And mostly that has to do with embankments, really steep embankments where you're pulling back a lot of soil. These aluminum head walls will work, but they're not ideal. And that's when we switch to a concrete. Well, what keeps the aluminum from cutting into the ground, into their stone? This is, this is, is a, a foot. It's got this a floor. It has a floor. Yeah, has this a floor isn't just floor. a hoop like stuck in a thing. It actually has a curved rib bottom with reinforcements that build a big plate. So I'm happy to show you the design if you want. And, the, and the, it, the whole thing is aluminum. Yep. The floor, the walls, the roof, everything. The head walls are all aluminum. Make a great storage <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's like a Kwanzaa, I mean, the old-fashioned Kwanzaa has on the floor, bolted to it. Really? Yep. I'm happy to show it to you. If you look at this, you can see I had a three-dimensional drawing that I didn't bring, unfortunately, but it's the same ribbing as the... It's filled with two feet of large diameter stone to hold it down and also provide a natural habitat for either fish or aquatic habitat. Over the years, between those big stones, the silt and sand fills in between it and creates a natural bottom. Now, is this the one that's going in? Yes, it is. So it's 22 feet across? Yep, 22 foot open span, and six and a half feet tall. Set two feet into the substrate. So the opening you'll see is only four and a half feet. You can walk through it, bent over, but it'll be 22 watts. You can walk through it with a canoe. Yeah, duck when you go through it with a canoe. <laughs> the, the 22 foot wide clear span was based, I mean, it is a massive watershed that feeds that end of um, Berlin Pond. Now, it's not a rushing river because it hits this huge wetland and open pond, but um, size on, you know, 25, 50, 100 year floods, you want to let that water go through rather than go over the road or push the culvert out. So VTRAN's recommendation from their hydraulics department was a 22 foot clear span opening or a bridge. And so this aluminum culvert is a much more economical choice than a full concrete bridge or yeah. steel bridge. Huh. Yeah, I always think it would be a little bit wider than the one we've got now. Right. I mean, 
It really is just a pressure relief valve, technically between two lakes. And if I was designing it from scratch, I would probably fix it a little bit bigger than what's there. I might not have gone to this big, but when you're using VTrans funding, you're kind of tied to their, yeah. their recommendations. Or you have to have a, a really strong case why you're not going to do that. And I thought we would spend more money fighting it than actually yeah. following the recommendations. We know it's big enough. Yeah. yeah. It sounds mostly future proof too, so. Get it in the ground, keep it down, <laughs> back to it. So tomorrow you're going to send me the agreement with Percy. Correct. I'll send it over to Rob, get it back to set up something next week, and then you can tell them to go? Yes, I can tell them to go. Yeah. You've already ordered the culvert, so that's coming. Right. I'm yeah. going to, you know, with your permission, I was going to have Percy arrange for unloading it. And so that they can inspect it, see it, since they're going to be responsible for putting it in place, rather than have your highway crew unload it, go right. and get all the pieces, things like right. that. Yeah, That's taking on a lot of responsibility for you. Yeah, I'd rather they didn't have to. Do okay, then I'll I'll contact Percy tomorrow and explain to them about. But speak with Tim Davis about any help that you might need or something. And That's where he wants it. Yeah. Okay. okay. And well, the only thing that I want to just remind you of Richardson Road is yes. our next project. Absolutely. And I've realized we're anxious to get this one done, but we uh, will be in a position to do some further work with Richardson Road. Okay. Yeah, at Richardson Road, we also had contact work with us to size that because we put in an initial application for the state when we did this one too, and you were awarded this, but not that one. Yes. So, you know, just as a preview, the Richardson Road one is of a similar size. Mm -hmm. Okay. Similar width and opening, similar height. And I'm not sure whether situation. we can do all of it this year. We'll have to plan. Um, right. Because we did not get a stretchers grant for Richardson Road. Okay. Can we apply next year? I think so, sure. Yeah. And I would. Too. Yeah. I would. So, I mean, in which case, they tell me no. Right. I mean, yeah. this job this year is to get this done and in. Do you want us to be doing some design work over the winter, or do you want to wait and see if you get that grant in the late spring? Um, you and I can talk about that okay. when, when we know where we are. Okay. Yeah. But I just wanted to bring it up. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G05 with checks 18395 through 18452 in the amount of $140,181.54. Uh, 140, also to void check 18404 in the amount of $500. Also general fund accounts payable warrant number uh, 18NSB15 in the amount of $5,970.53. Also, payroll warrant number 19-05 for payroll from August 19th, 2018 through September 1st, 2018 in the amount of $40,596.38. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and the Berrytown Fund of Chickens. Jim, you're a regular at these meetings. Yeah, I was, I was just wondering what sort of tolerance you folks had here. Me sitting here talking. I, mean, I don't hear me talk this much. Time to get and then I got to tell you, pluses and minuses to all things. After watching my backside go in front of that camera a few times on the internet, I'm probably going to be adjusting my diet. Oh wow! I know. That. Uh, I think when you were here last time, the board had asked me to check out the insurance that Bast has, and I do have their insurance policy, which is a six million aggregate insurance policy. I did speak with our insurer um, at Passive. Um, he feels it's an additional liability that the town should think carefully before taking. Um, he feels that this insurance is always a possibility, since this is statewide, it's the vast insurance, so mm -hmm. he says, um, that it may not be an entire six million. And 
but they would cover our liability needs. However, if there were an issue, we'd be paying for it for a number of years, like we, like we do when you have claims. Um, you had sent me these statutes. Yeah, um, which is a good copy of which, that. You know, yeah. and I don't know if you want me to talk, if you wanted to talk about that first, but I did send that over to our attorney today to have them look at it. Okay. Um, and he feels that these statutes, while it relates to public and private lands, not so much on public roads. He feels that's a different, that the statute wasn't written for that purpose. Um, he also um, told me that we should really think carefully before um, going forward with that, although he did tell me that the liability that we would have on public roads is different than it's like a, a motorist on a public road. If, if, uh, unless we know of a safety issue that, and if we don't address it, then we're, yeah. then we're on the hook. If we don't know of it, we're not. Um, he did mention that the statute mentions that each individual snowmobile owner, and I'm sure most of you do, have insurance. You're required to. And, and you, you are required to, but we are not, you know, obviously we can't be checking make sure it can have insurance. So I guess, Brad, that's where I am with that, what I've done so far. Um, did you have something new that you wanted to talk to the board about? Yes, yes I did, and I and realized this sort of has a little bit of a last call sort of a feel to thing, so just under the realm of doing due diligence for my own personal to know, I've not miss something because frequently when you're doing things verbally, you're going, oh, my God, I forgot to talk about that or do that sort of a thing. Um, and just, and by the way, this is uh, Dick Sargent. He is the uh, trails coordinator for the Lost Nation ATV Club in Northfield, who's been working with us on so that. He has much more experience as far as ATV travel on roads and such, and I believe he even has some copies of the ordinances of the towns that they do there, if that's sure. what he valued. Mm -hmm. the, the first thing is, since the last meeting, I've spent some more time up here traveling back and forth on the roads looking around and some of the other folks involved in the projects have been going around and we now have a a uh, proposed route change for the sled traffic so that you would no longer have to be looking at going down black road or burfield road with with sled traffic in order to connect loop up around and connect in up above where the city of Montpelier property stops and no, I believe from looking at, from what I've seen, that would be slightly above the wooden bricks that's up there without knowing it specifically along there, but there was a, a landowner that we had previously thought was not going to allow for the sleds to travel there, but apparently one of the, one of the locals talked with him and that seemed to be op an open possibility. Now we haven't signed any papers and as a good friend of mine's dad used to say, it's all BS until the cash register rings. So. But tentatively, that we've got permission from folks that we could do that so that that the sled traffic wouldn't have to go down Black Road or go down Brookfield Road in order to get there. You would still have to pass through over the water and under the bridge, which is really, without that, there isn't any access to the services, and, and I cannot imagine that the organizations they represent are going to put any time or money into building the trail if it's not access to services. We've got first-class services here. It seemed a shame that we couldn't find some way to connect that and make that go. But. Um, also, a lot of these things come down to, you know, as I work thinking through that, you know, I've tried to mark, okay, so what, what should I talk about? Because I, I don't know that any of you folks belong to any of these organizations or have had any real work in it or anything like that. Essentially, you know, what, what are they offering to do for the town? They're offering to take any part of the trail system that becomes part of a club trail and assume responsibility for all construction and maintenance and signage and, and take care of all those things. And we're the first people they call if somebody's you know dropped a beer can in the woods or something's going on or they got off the trail they call us we dave rulo our club president has a very good relationship with the local law enforcement and usually a call comes he calls in and next thing you know somebody's out there and somebody's written a ticket for something and, and the problem goes away you know and they i went to the website trying to find out about a meeting for the conservation committee and one of the things that came away from it appears that they're under man and they're looking for help so I would think that any help that they could get in, in keeping the trails up and clean and the brush cleaned up and everything would, would be welcome from their standpoint. I didn't, however, make a connection with them to find out if there was a meeting this week or not. I'm not, not sure about that. I'm sure there's somebody that has emailed me that I haven't returned it wondering where the heck I am to and what's going on with that. You know, and as far as 
you know, from that angle of it. And I, I'm always hesitant to talk about money and these things because it seems a little crash to use that as a motivation for people. But that also means if there is no trail, there's no riders, and there's no and the revenue they bring with them. These people spend money. They, they, they're not afraid to when they come and wherever they go, them and not, sometimes they bring their kids and their wives and they stay and do that as well, which that's a piece of the puzzle that they, that they bring along with that, along with doing that and providing uh, recreational opportunities for the local residents. My experience is it's not five minutes after you, you lay down a trail that folks are starting to use it. And we don't have any problem with people doing that. In the wintertime, people cross-country ski, they snowshoe, they walk their dogs. It's that that's part of the process. I mean, it's on. We are at the pleasure of the land that we're on, and people will use it as they will. And as long as the landowners don't care, we're more. We don't mind. As long as everybody just understands that you know we're all sharing the stuff, and we got to watch out for each other that we don't run into something along the way. Um, you know what they bring, and then who are they? I mean, that's one of the things I find. I sometimes make the mistake to think that other people know what you know. You know, the people they'll see snow machines, they see ATV. The people, our members are predominantly licensed drivers. Most people, there are very few. If you're in, if you're part of Bass, you have to be, and you're mandated to take a safety course before you can be on the trail. They're, they're reasonable people that use the roads every day. They know how it works. You know, you stop and look both ways. You also know you're the smallest guy on the road. If there's a safety issue, chances are you're going to be on the wrong end of it. So you're really extra vigilant to be sure that you're, <laughs> that's the last thing you're looking for is to go out on a day and be in, caught in the middle of something. That they travel up and down the road all day long. I've got, just as an example, I just pulled this up off of my GPS. This is actually a trail I rode on personally this year, going down four and a half miles of state highway on an ATV in Berlin, New Hampshire, rolling right into downtown to the restaurant and the gas station and out the other side. They, there are many towns over there where they're going to New Hampshire as part of that ride, right, right downtown, right to the hotel. They actually have a rental place right there, so you've got people that aren't even regular riders that come out and manage to navigate the highways and byways and, there and go and <coughs> seem to be able to do it just fine. How do you enforce your rules, your club rules? The, the most likely thing you see is that we work with law enforcement that, that they go out onto intersections, usually in the more, you know, if they, they usually take them places quite find it easier to get to, and they literally put troopers right on right on the trail. And you get stopped, it's, it's probably four or five times a year I bump into them, and you get to where they're the same guys, you get to know them, and they check all your paperwork and everything that's there. Put a sticker on your sled saying yes. We, you know, we've already checked. You have insurance. You have, you know, you've got a vast membership and that sort of thing. And the other stuff is more case by case. If, if something, obviously, you're out here where it's out in the open where people would see them. And one of the pluses of this is law enforcement is right here. You got to figure people. If you're not going to be careful here, you're probably not going to anywhere. Or you're right here in plain sight. You know, and, and from the who beyond the, the members, the organizations themselves, they, they, they've been doing this for over 50 years. VASA has been in business for 20 years. I've been doing this for almost 50 years. I, if anybody knows where a safe place to make a trail is, they should know. And I assure you, they would not be endorsing me being here talking to you if they felt they were going to be creating safety issues for anybody or liability issues or anything. That they, they know this better <clears throat> better than anybody, where you can and where you can't and where you shouldn't be. And if, if they're not concerned, I've got to believe that we should be able to manage to navigate a short piece of a country road. Part of what we've talked about, they've heard mention of the traffic volume and that sort of thing, and I understand all that, but I, my personal experience, I haven't been a resident here for a long time, but I've been up here a lot this summer looking at all these things. I've yet to see a car on Black Road other than me. I came up here twice in the last, since the last meeting, traveled into here, looked around, I did look around here to see. I didn't want to get out and walk around without you guys knowing without poking around in your backyard as a you know a way to get around here to get to the road, which if that comes up we can talk about that later. But in those two trips, traveling this entire route up and down and back and forth around here, I saw I combined eleven vehicles in two nights after work. I did however see I had to literally stop my car and wait for people standing in the middle of the road talking over there for them to figure out that which side of the road to get to so they could go. And I saw kids literally sitting on bicycles, as I used to do the same thing on the country road when I was there, I literally sitting in the middle of the road, up above the intersection, standing there talking, which said to me that the locals know that this is 
it's, it, we're not talking about the interstate here. You know, that there, there, obviously there's traffic, obviously there's higher times, but it's, it, it's a country road, and it, it shouldn't bear that. As yeah, to that end, I took a snippet of that off from the trail map. This is a picture of where the trail crosses under the interstate on exit five. The Snowmobile Trail crosses, I believe there's at least five different pieces of the road it crosses, and one of them is the southbound off-ramp of the interstate. And that's been going on for years with no incident that I'm aware of. You know, once again, showing that the people that do this stuff, are, they, they know what they're doing. They're not just going to be pulling out in traffic and, and doing any foolishness. This is just a snippet I grabbed of a trail that they've got up in Newport that literally goes right downtown, right to the restaurant there, where the sleds come into town. That uh, And there was some discussion about that, and quite frankly, I wasn't really that happy with my own self about the way I talked about how do these machines travel around the road. It didn't feel like it projected a very clear picture of that. The sleds don't like to be on dry ground. So they will stop at the edge of the road and where necessary, like over a bridge or something, as soon as they can, they want to be up on the snowbank or where it's flattened off. So they generally, it gets packed on each side and they drive park where they have to. As far as an ATV, it's essentially it's a miniature car. You, you follow the same rules. About the only thing that's different for that is there's usually a posted speed limit that's much slower for ATV traffic than there is for, for automotive traffic. And you essentially stop at the side of the road. If we, if we were to use the proposed thing I saw the other day, it looks to me like there's plenty of room to come out of the back of the travel center, along the edge of the trees, and loop around. You only need about six feet wide for an ATV traffic to get around the end of the rink, and you'd be using maybe 100 feet of shed road. It'd really be no different than somebody's driveway being there. I mean, people stop, you know, both ways. There's somebody coming, you wait, you pull out. There was some mention about, you know, meeting sleds and that sort of stuff. They're, they're going to be coming if they're there single file down the road watching out for you because they're a lot more scared of you than you are of them. They're, you're, you know, you're much more exposed. I mean, you know, people are generally pretty careful. I, I've been out there a long time, and I'd like to, I'd like to think that the miles don't show, but I guess you can <laughs> notice I've got a few miles on me, and I've been around out there. And, and so far, it's all gone fairly well. Um, Are I, people using these trails night and day? The Generally, in ATV trails, the rule is a half hour before and a half hour after dusk. And that is, that's a rule of thumb that most places adapt. The landowners can set whatever rules they want to. I mean, you, I, I think of you as a landowner, only that we come to a meeting as opposed to knocking on your door. You have total control over what happens there. You can revoke the permission at any time for any reason. The municipalities, normally it's an annual thing. We, we set the parameters in the beginning. We do a, a trial basis to see how, A, the, the project as a whole goes and the, the route and signs and that sort of thing. If things come up along the way, we adjust as we go. And once a year in Barrytown, Dave shows up to the meeting and they go through and if there's somebody new there, there's usually more questions. If it's the same group, I don't know how you guys for turnover go. It's usually, it's, they go there. And if, if there have been any issues that already would have come up and been dealt with, and they grant permission year to year. And, if, and as far as any of the other stuff, I, it's somewhat baffling to me, some of it, that, I mean, we use the roads and places all over the place, been doing it for years, as to some of the organized, some of the things that we've said about people wanting to be really concerned about that and all of it's, it happens in other towns and seems to be getting along fine. I'm not sure if there was some mention about the city, the, the this is, uh, League of Cities and Towns. Was that, cities Vermont, and towns? Was that cities as in, towns, yeah. you know, as to yeah, it's if, if it's happening in other places and seems to be okay, I'm not sure the, the, the level, that, I mean, I understand for you guys for the first time around, but for an organization like them, that was a little confusing to hear that. I'd never heard of anything like that before, so well, I'm not doubting they said it, it just seemed I hadn't heard that before. You mean as far as not recommending it? Right. Well, they? I think any if your insurance is always telling you to take as little risk as possible, and I think that is what okay. the mess. Well, that makes a lot more sense. My insurance guy would probably tell me I shouldn't course. drove over here in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> he certainly should tell me if he saw me on TV, I should be adjusting my diet. Yes, sir. Exactly. Um, if Nick, is there anything that you'd like to add that? If there, that there, like you there? Yes. Um, Here's a copy of our ordinances that we have in Roxbury and Northfield. We also work with Braintree. Mm -hmm. I go to them year by year. We don't. We have some highly sensitive trails. 
with some landowners, upper class from Connecticut, from Washington, D.C. If there's a screw up, we're gonna know about it, we're gonna lose the trails. And one landowner wouldn't even give us permission, wouldn't talk to me for like a year. Fine, after two years, Dalton would allow us on the back of his property, didn't want us on the road. And now he said he'll endorse us. He has a full respect of us. We're good with him. He says we can't, we've done everything we've told him to do. And he's just happy that we're working together. But he gave us a letter of recommendation. I couldn't find that in my file. But we have, once in a while, we'll have a little incident, not an incident, but a little complaint. Maybe once, I think, a year, two years. And normally, once it was the amount of traffic we had in one day, we had a po uh, poker run, and they didn't like that. So we don't have that. We have a smaller event. And we haven't had a complaint since about that. Mm -hmm. So we try to take care of our trails, so we keep them in use every year. So I guess be the question is if we want to take and reinstate the We would have to at this point ordinance. we would have to write an ordinance. It would have we'd have a public hearing like we do with ordinances. It would take sixty days, I guess, for it to take effect. Um, thank you for the examples. Um, speaking for myself, I don't have any question that the club is honorable and does the right thing. Not That's not it at all. I am concerned about Crosstown Road and Shed Road. Um, have you done any, is there any way you could get to the highway underpass cross lots on Crosstown Road? Have you done any sort of discussion with, and I'm not sure you have to go across to the pond, uh, the brook, I guess. All right now, from what I've seen so far, which I would, it would be pretty awesome if someone here knew something different because that would be a better solution for everyone. Right. I, my understanding is the folks that own the building where the, the driveway that drops down would, would, that would not be a problem for us to cross their property, but to get mm -hmm. across the water, at least the maps I've seen, it appears to me that the city of Montpelier has something that runs right up on each side of that. Okay. And I didn't know. I, didn't know. I, I may be wrong, but when I look at the I've got a, an app that brings up the Joe's property lines. It's on the internet, so it must be true as to where, mm -hmm. <laughs> as to where they are. But it looks like they board some some sort of right away or something on each side of the water that goes out through there. I don't know that if you can. It would. My first thought was to you know can you go out and get near enough to the highway about being in there right away? There might be a culvert going up and over or something, but. Once again, that hasn't. I've not literally gone out there and walked water around. Supply. Um, so their their line is under there. Their transmission line. Something. Yeah. I mean, if I that, that would be that. a better solution for all. If if that mm. came part of that. Honestly, in the long run, as a rider, I would much prefer to come whether I was on a sled or a four wheeler to come out this way than to go out that way. The road's not a problem, but you get the big parking lot trying to figure out who's on first and what's going on. It's mm -hmm. a lot simpler. If you just know you just come out of the back, that's okay. that's where you go. When you, you get gas, go to the back of the parking lot. It's to, if you know it, it's very easy to navigate. But if you don't know where you're going, you know, and you can get, it's easier to get confused out sure. there. If our, if my, are, you, are you thinking that maybe there is, I assume that there was open water out there. Out, out, I honestly don't way, know. So it just, I just yeah. came to my head. Thinking. All right. Well, maybe we can we can go out there and walk around there as long as you know, you know we don't like to get poke around too much without people knowing who we are and what's going on right, out there. Yeah, that certainly would be better in the long run. I don't know. I think you would still be looking as though there's just another driveway on the other side. And it, you might be involved with the city as well because might, that's might be with that. I mean, this yeah. seemed to be. I, what one of the many things questions that arise that you know that I don't always have the answers to. What what specifically are we concerned about with Shed Road? I mean, what, for lack of a better way, people ask me, what, what do they think is going to happen when I say that? And I say, I really don't know. I, I guess I'll have to ask a more specific question. What, what are the specific concerns about the shed road? Let's say particularly if we could get in from here and just use like 100 feet of it down to there. Well, when I think of shed road, I mean, we have the highway trucks coming in and out, especially during a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're coming in and out. We've got the police coming in and out. We have citizens coming in and out. Is it? busy, 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 no, um, but I'm just thinking that in an ideal situation, it's not ideal. 
It's just that sometimes when the police leave there, going above the speed limit. That, that happens. I mean, you know, they're, they're in and out quickly. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you got to sit the town trucks with the plows and the wings and everything else. Yeah, which they take, up, they take up some road. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, typically I mean, if I were on a snowmobile, I'd certainly give way to the 10 wheel truck. But, yes, uh -huh. I, yeah, I'm yeah. most likely we'd be home shoveling my yard when that was going on. It's supposed to be out there, but um, I, I'm not sure what else there is for, for me to say. A lot of these. Things come down to it's like for me the indecision I make is you know what's what's my motivation? You you never know in a situation whether the town's glad to give me. You seem to be a recreation friendly sort of place. I mean they've got you set aside the place so it seemed like a natural sort of thing for that. If if the club's bringing the trails in there, if that's not really something the town as a whole would would rather that we didn't then it doesn't really matter, you know, whether we talk about the consent story. It's really what it comes down to, because we, we, we can find plenty of evidence to show we do it in other places and it all gets along fine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's really that. It really just comes down to, but obviously it is a change and it is something that's there, the plus minuses of all things and that sort of stuff. And I suspect that's what it will come down to, is whether the group as a whole feels like this is, yes, we'd like to have this here, we'd like to have the benefits of it, we think that the residents can do that. I've bumped into plenty of people up there that, I recently met a guy that he's got three machines, so he makes two trips every Saturday morning down with his truck and his trailer to unload down here and drives a mile back up the road and gets another one and everything. And he says, I'm getting to work. So this is here. I can see the damn thing almost from my house, except I can't get there. So that there's. So, so just to clarify, you're talking about using some of Shed Road and from Shed Road under the interstate bridge and then how far beyond it? For, for sled traffic, we would be looking at coming up the, the old pond road. The little dirt road by the end of here, you, you come out of there, turn, cross over the water, get underneath the interstate. And if you go up there now, I did, someone has been bush hogging even right down over the hill, right where we're proposing that we would go up into private property there. The ATVs, in order to get there, would come out of the back. That seems like if it all could be worked out, would be way better than sending them on the main road. And the landowners over there, at this point or not want to let summer traffic come through. They don't mind the winter, but they didn't want the summer, which, you know, same so that. And for ATVs, we don't have permission at this point to use the Woods Trail. That could come in time, but that would be still looking at Black Road and down that section from where it intersects with Brookfield to where the parking ride is there. So there, I, I thought of it in, in four sections as I was planning it in my head, and one of them has now, we, we've got an alternate to that to get around there. And if I may add, um, our typical usage on our trails on a given weekend is typically five ATVs a day. It's not much during the work week. You might see a couple in the afternoon, but not much at all. And if you are familiar at all with Lovers Lane in Northfield, we go down a short section of that to get to the South Village Mobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, as we were talking last time, they, we, we actually got five sections of state highway now that the machines travel. One will be in Route 25 in West Thompson. I, I would suspect with the, the enticements that are here that, that there'd be more than five machines on a weekend. I probably would expect that. But most of the, most, you do see something, people on vacation, that sort of thing, but mostly it's outside of business hours. That most people that have these machines, they cost money and they got, they're working all day. You know, there's some evening traffic and then it's usually weekends. I, I being on the, the higher demographic tend to start a little earlier than many. A lot of them don't don't get rolling until noon or so after that. You know, we're we're more up, I trade more uh, evening hours for morning hours every year. So we're we're usually more starting earlier in the morning and going. Um, I'm not sure what else that I can offer other than to thank you for your time. I'm sure I'm sure you're probably getting ready for somebody else to be sitting in this chair talking talking to you about things at this point. Um, what what happens from here for a Mars team? Where, what, should, what should I be thinking about doing from here? That's probably a good question. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is see if we want to take and enact a, a new ordinance for the travel. Okay. After that, then you probably have to go through a commission process. If there, when there's a public hearing, everybody, we would have to publish what this route might be. Okay. And then everybody that lives on that route will be able to come say their piece. Yeah, I, I mean, I would expect that that would be how yeah. go. So, and that, 
what sort of a time frame does that look at? I mean, is this what do you think, a couple another months? Um, well, it depends if the board instructs me to, to go ahead and draft a, an ordinance and schedule a public hearing. Right, so, um, so we should maybe we should make some indication about whether this is something that we really want to do before we ask Dana to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, we're hearing from Dana, and I'm not hearing like big encouraging noises there. We're hearing from the police chief, I'm also not hearing recommendations there. We're hearing from the town attorney, we're hearing from the insurance. Um, I understand the, the, some of the economic benefits. I mean, it, it, it makes sense, but the people that are, that are being paid to give us advice are giving us advice. That's, that's my thought. Speaking for myself, I very much support recreation. And if it wasn't quite so much time on a town road, I might look at it differently. But um, I think you have a great organization. I think you do a good job. And, and I have no question that people do the right thing. Um, but I do have to listen to my safety people mm -hmm. and listen to what they tell me. Well, the other, um, the other part of this also is, is that you have citizens of the town that are into motor recreation and yet they, they, um, they're the one that pays the safety people. And what, we're, what I think we're doing here is we're not allowing the citizens of the town to have a say in this. We're, allowing, we're letting a lot of the hired help to us. Fair enough. That's why I think a public, I mean, I don't think it's a harm in a public hearing. No, I don't either. If I lived on Black Road, I would certainly be at the public hearing. And uh, if I lived on Comstock Road and had a snowmobile, I'd be at the public hearing. Yeah. But I think that we're, we work for the public. <laughs> I think we need to hear what they have to say. <laughs> that, makes, that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. So that process, just to make sure that I'm following things, does that mean, I'm assuming that you guys will be talking amongst yourselves while we're not here, that's how I would do it, and if I was doing that to come to something. No, we'll be talking, we'll be talking to the camera. Okay. So you can well, that's that right. Yeah. And I won't have to look at my big butt go by in front of it, and I go by there. That, uh, and, and if that's the, the decision to go forward, then there's a, well, it used to be always in the paper. I don't have to put it in the paper anymore. I assume they probably still do. Yes. One, one thing that, that we would ask that as this is presented to people, because how you ask the question shapes a lot about how you get the answer, that we're, if we're looking at that in the three separate segments, we would not want to have the ATV folks not be able to have access because someone was thinking about they didn't want a snowmobile going by their house. That Because it could very well be, you could very easily say, yes, we'll let ATVs go over here, but you can't put the snowmobiles over the river sort of a thing. So the, the, because it, it's not an all for one for the organizations, it certainly is, but not, but not literally. That well, what, it, saying, what you're saying is it can be one or the other. It, you're right. It could very well be, and to not have people thinking that, well, you know, I don't mind the ATVs, but I don't want the sleds going by, so I have to vote no. Is the board thinking of having a public hearing first before you make a decision? We haven't yet, David. You don't know yet. <laughs> okay. They're waiting for us to get out of here so they can uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I um, was just wondering if you would want me to find that um, copy of the recommendation and then send it to you guys so that you guys can look over what his concerns were and that so then you're not just hearing from someone, you actually have some proof in front. I would say whatever you have that you can share with us, yeah, okay. that would be great. So is that something to send an yeah, email send to the town clerk? You can send it to me. Yeah, Dan, um, Dan's very responsive. It's been, yeah. it's been it's one of the handy down things down that too? I'll give you a card. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we, if we had a public hearing in advance of us proceeding with writing the ordinance. That's one thing. Yeah. 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 We put it on the agenda as discussion for the use of Shed Road, uh, Crosstown Road, Black Road for motorized recreational vehicles and let the, the taxpayers come and talk to us about how they feel about it. So uh, thank you. And I think the chief should be here and he should tell us how he feels about it. And okay. I, the chief should be here and tell yeah. us how he feels about mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, I think that we should hear from everyone and decide whether we have a public hearing. Yeah. 
about and okay. and that's still happens like similar to what we're doing here with just more people mm -hmm. hopefully okay right now we're going to, we're kind of feeling our way blowing yeah I don't want to say that I had an opinion on this without hearing from the public yeah no it was more to actual practical matters that what happens is folks come yeah. here just hopefully more of them mm -hmm. yeah. okay and if we could send out some yeah, specific invites to people yeah. and have a proposed group. Do you, uh, have you, could you take and give Dana a proposed route in the, in the uh, addresses? The, uh, where I, are you? The, the I, road stretches. Yeah, where the roads go. I, I believe the only thing, well, I provided our pictures with yeah. drawing on it to, to do that, but we certainly could. I don't know. And that was something in writing versus a picture? Is well, no, the, and another thing is, have you talked to everyone about this where you intend to cross their land? We'd hate to float around a drawing with a proposed route and have a taxpayer see the route on their property. You know what, hey, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> that, I guess that's a better way of putting it. Yeah. That, <clears throat> I, I believe that we have. I've, it's been reported to me that Josh had been out and spoken to the folks about which the you know to get around from there he had reported to me hey i talked to this guy and this guy he's all good and we had talked to the people above the i think there's three property owners from his place that gets you over to the the uh conservative the conservation trail there we go and but we certainly would want to revisit that i want to double check with them just make sure we're not missing something because I, I wouldn't want to see that in the paper myself i can tell you that we at the traveler center didn't know anything about atvs until I hear it here at the select board meeting. Hmm. So I'll, my only concern would be that a taxpayer sees a map with a trail across his land and this doesn't know like about that. it. Yeah. Huh. Well, it was projected to me that the folks were in contact that knew the, knew the, the people that knew the people were keeping them 100% in the loop of things. But just apparently, saying, apparently something got quite the before that there. map is circulated. I'd want to be sure of that because yeah. well, absolutely, you don't want to start in a hostile environment. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that, that wouldn't work out. <laughs> right. no. right. If you could take and uh, uh, make sure that you have all your ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. All right. And when you go back, if you do go back to talk to any of the landowners, be sure to tell them uh, we'll set a time for this meeting. And, then you'll have a chance to make sure they're primed for it. Okay, seems more than reasonable. All right, are we are we good? Is there anything else? We're good. Not? Okay. Well, thank God. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Yeah. Thanks again. Thanks. Both. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, approval select, uh, select board minutes from uh, 8 6 2018. Uh, I have uh, one minor change for the August 6th meeting under the Browns Mill Road of speed limits on page two. Um, Chris Winters, yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. I move to uh, approve the minutes of the August 6, 2018 select board meeting with the previously noted change. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And for the Monday, August 20th, 2018 uh, select board minutes. to approve the minutes for the August 20th, 2018 select board meeting as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, <coughs> motion carries. And Dana, your additions? Yes, uh, the first one um, was a discussion on changing the meeting day. And that was requested by select board member Capron. Yeah. We meet currently the first and third Monday of the month regularly. Obviously this one's different. So 
it's clashing with Olivia, my daughter's Girl Scouts meetings. And I'm having an issue. Can't be in two places at once at the same time. It's um, only for it's only for this year. I don't even you know it's not like every month either because she alternates Mondays. Is there is there another day of the week that the town office is available on a recurring? We state? have right now um, the DRB meets the first and third Tuesday of the month, so the board could meet. If they chose Tuesday, the second and fourth Tuesday, planning meets second and fourth Wednesday. So the board could choose the first and third Wednesday. Thursday is an open day, and Friday's not an option. And every other Monday, I have sewer and water and public works board. So second uh, second Tuesday, I have Central Vermont Internet. Mm -hmm. Thursday well, is slightly better. Thursday would be the first and third. Uh, and Tuesday, um, Tuesday would be second and fourth, and Wednesday would be first and third. Wednesday. And Thursday could be anything. First and third, or second and fourth, whatever. You Wednesday is the same as Monday for me. Yeah. Gives you a little bit more weekend. Wednesday doesn't work, but Thursday would work, I think. Thursday's slightly better for me because I don't have any classes. I've only got like 10 minutes left. This <laughs> 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 I, you know. it, it, it's all salary. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, your, your tenure here is going to be the longest as it stands right now. I mean, because you just got elected to the three year seat, so. <clears throat> I have an issue on Wednesdays. I have an issue that my only issue with changing it to Tuesdays every on the second and fourth is that I'd have meetings every Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's not fun. So, and I, and I, I couldn't make half of those. Right. So Thursday is probably the better. Sounds like it. Choice. And this could even just be a temporary thing. I can I can live on Thursdays. You want to say Thursdays through next town meeting? We have to hold our slot for the first and <laughs> Mondays. <laughs> well, I mean, there's going to stampede to use the space, right? Yeah. So my goal, full disclosure, this starting in November, December is going to be between then and March to go away for eight or ten four-day weekends through the winter and try to figure out where I might want a place someday other than Vermont. Ah, so my plan is to go Thursdays and come back Mondays. I was trying to avoid select board Mondays, um, but so now I'll avoid, avoid select, select board Thursdays because it's all the same. Yeah. So I can make that work. So, um, for us to formally adopt this, should we put this on the next meeting agenda, or because we didn't? I would put it on the next meeting agenda. We had one more voice to hear from. Yeah. Thank you. But I mean, yeah, I think in, in, in principle, there's not that much difference to me whether it's Monday or Thursday. I'll just miss the you know I'll come to select board meeting Thursday and leave Friday and miss the sewer board meeting on Monday. Yeah. Well, Tom will just have to figure that out. He'll figure it out, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll put that on the agenda for the September 17th meeting. And I'd also need some time to notify, put notice out so that people understand it's changing. I've contacted the Girl Scouts once um, and have not gotten a reply about switching her group so that she would switch the day. Mm -hmm. well, I have not heard back, so I can also reach out to them okay. again. Well, you'll have two weeks before the next yeah. meeting to... <laughs> I'll call them this time and we'll email. Mm -hmm. Alternate signer? Alternate signer? Yes, um, this is for the, um, the revolving fund uh, loans that we have for the water division and the sewer division. 
um, when we send in our request for reimbursement of the bills that we've paid, currently I'm the only one that can sign those um, to, for that. And I certainly can do that. However, they suggest that there's two people in the event I get hit by a bus. What, um, what was the... Uh for the water and sewer loan? Yeah, we have the we have the ninety thousand loan with the um, yeah. state for the revolving fund. That's for the exploratory work for the water, and a similar loan for sewer, which is for forty two thousand. So, so you, do you and Tom often walk down the same road with the bus coming in? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes we're in the same bus, you yeah. know. <laughs> are, we, are we talking about making Tom the sign or? Diane? I am. I am talking about making Diane the alternate sign. Move to add Diane Isabel, town treasurer, as the alternate. Sign signer for the drinking water revolving fund and sewer also revolving fund yeah. and sewer revolving fund second well the only question there is uh, if, if do you have the treasurer sign off on is there a conflict there or is there any well I don't think so and it's because the treasurer um, this is just a I know it's a what if, a but bookkeeping thing, but the treasurer is the one claiming for the reimbursement, and okay. and it's I get an email telling what they've got when they're sending it, yeah. so forth, and so we, we have that double check that way. I also am the one that does the reconciliation of the bank account, so I know that it's, it's there. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. So this needs the sign of the chair and then also board members underneath. Liquor next. Yes. Move to recess the select board and convene the liquor control board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We have a request for a catering license um, from Bombastic Industries doing business as the Blue Donkey for a party at the outdoor CrossFit competition at Green Mountain CrossFit 654 Granger Road. Um, we have had a previous license with this vendor. Um, we have not had any trouble. They want to be selling it um, He is from Stowe. Okay. And that's just the beer tent at the... Yeah, the little event they're having up of the... Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to uh, adjourn the Liquor Control Board and reconvene the Select Board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Um, town Administrator's report, Nathan? You know, I have a, a few things that I'd like to mention to you. Um, one is we have had several, um, I won't call them complaints, but several concerns brought to us about gentleman who is parking over at the pond in the fish and wildlife lot um, and I have reached out to fish and wildlife to ascertain because it's lease land yep. I don't really have the power to stick a sign up um, so I did reach out to Mike Perkowski over there and with the concerns that we're having and he is going to work on it with his retirement to see if he can get sign put up. However, he did mention that his access area is open 24-7, which I was surprised at. Is there camping allowed? Um, but he did not mention anything about loud camping. So, um, just so that you know that we are ever so slowly working on that. The other item, and I sent you an email regarding a meeting that is being held at the end of September. Uh, the medical center is starting planning on possibility of a new inpatient mental health facility at the hospital. Um, I do plan to go to that September 27th meeting. Um, I guess my concern is I really would like to know more about it to understand what our concerns would be. As you know, we have a, an agreement with the state for the psychiatric hospital. I'm not sure if this is similar, but um, 
I do think that we need to be cognizant of that. Um, Tom spent a lot of time working on the, uh, the insurance program for the flood um, planes and so forth to get people in flood planes a reduced um, insurance rate. We did receive a plaque the other day from them because we had done such a good job. And I was really surprised it's only six towns in Vermont that did that. And, nice. And we're one of them. So I just had a shout out to Tom. Um, after the last meeting, Browns Mill Road, you approved that. That um, the ordinance has been published in the paper. If we don't, if we hear, have no feedback on that, it would be effective October 19th. Um, we went to order a children at play sign, and we were told that the state no longer recommends those because it encouraged children to play in the road. Right. Um, so. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there you are. Okay. Um, Did you ever find out how much one of those little radar signs are? How much they cost? Yeah. I haven't read. Yeah. Did you see the phone at uh, Ruth Brothers stepping down Bridge Street? No. They pull one of the permanent ones there on that. It's a, 20, a 35 mile an hour speed sign. Yep. And right below it, they put a permanent radar sign. And it, it's got the blue flasher in the center of it. Mm -hmm. catches your attention. <laughs> really? I set it off every morning. <laughs> and I do pay attention to it. Yeah. Well, I know that, like, any player, like, Waitsfield, Montpelier, anytime you, other than the high school, anytime you see a school, they always have those signs up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, I think it does catch people's attention. So I just found a news article from 2015 that said they were buying units for 3600 each. Ooh. And I do know that ours does not, I probably should say, doesn't keep up history. You know, and some of no, no, I was thinking, I was thinking of the sign that goes onto a post. It's permanent. Like the small one that has yeah. the blue thing flashing. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. wondered how much those were. I could find out. I don't know. You must be on eBay even now. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use it. Amazon. Yeah. I'm just go out later. <laughs> but I thought it was interesting. GPS tracker. <laughs> and I haven't spoken with um, Sarah about the yeah. children at play thing, but Tim could not get or I was just thinking have to that, sign a waiver for the editor or something. Yeah, I was just thinking that one of those little flashy signs would be a good substitute. Mm -hmm. Somebody stole my little yellow man <laughs> on East Road. First, they put it at the end um, on 60. Is it 62? 62 down there? Yeah. yeah. By, the, by the exit? So I grabbed yeah. it and I put it back in my yard and then they, then they took it. Well, that's because it was illegal and I had to Burning man. It was encouraging nice. people to wave a flag. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To wave a flag unnecessarily. <laughs> Your kids um, playing around it. <laughs> we have yeah. um, <clears throat> some interest in alternate members of the DRB. I'm going to invite these people that are interested in to meet you next time. Well, we're interested Possibly. to meet them. And I'm hoping you're interested in meeting them. I like to encourage people who are willing to volunteer to volunteer. Um, the stormwater project, which is for the town office, um, we received three, and this is being managed by the Planning Commission, but we did receive three proposals. Um, Bob Wernick and myself are reviewing them in addition to the planning commission. This is uh, an $8,000 project, so I don't know how interesting that is to people, but um, we did have interest of three, and this is to come up with a plan of how we deal with our stormwater. Uh, the police department doors, uh, I did reach out to um, several people, and I had some response of people that came and looked at it. Uh, Portland Glass came and looked at it. Lajeunesse looked at it, E.F. Wall looked at it, um, and a gentleman named Andy Emerson from Northfield looked at it. So I should know sometime soon about getting that project done. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, the town plan, um, that's hit a snag. The Regional Planning Commission did not approve it, asking for 
some further clarification. So Tom and I and Carla are working with regional planning to see if we can resolve this easily without having to send this back to you for approval and back to the voters for approval. Um, or, it, it, or it, this should not have happened. We had a consultant and um, is it substantive? I mean, is it how, how big would you say it was? There is one area that would be what I consider a substance, uh, I can't say the word, but a substantive change. Mm -hmm. um, I am trying to, back in 2012, and I didn't know this until they told me at the Planning Commission, that the town plan was approved with the idea that things would be changed in the next plan. And so they kind of gave us a pass. Um, but I didn't know that. And, but I'm hoping I can, that's one way maybe I could appeal to them. If we do have to go back to this, what do you think the probability is? I mean, the, the big process, what's, what do you think the probability, probability is that we can get it back? Town meeting. I, well, I, back I in front of the voters in November. It's not possible. Okay. We don't have enough time um, for meeting. all the, all the, Required have to require court wait time, time and so forth. Yeah. So it would be no I mean, no, my, right. uh, but I'm hoping we don't have to do that. Thank you. That's all I have. Uh, round table one, Jeremy. Um, I've been thinking more about the, the fire department and actually some other things that I think that we we sort of back burnered. I admit that right now I don't have those in front of me, but I think possibly in the next um, month or so. We might want to consider starting up a charter change committee and looking at some of the other changes to the charter that we've sort of talked about um, over the past few years. The last change that we had created the um, public works board and made some other minor changes that uh, I know that Tom Clerk wanted regarding um, regulating animals and, yeah, and, and, and that sort of thing. The fees. Um, but as I recall, not long after that, there was some, some discussion about other things that also could be modified or changed in that as well. And I don't, like I said, I, I don't remember that. But I think thinking about the status of the fire department as one of the biggest changes in this, that might be a worthwhile thing to do. OK. Um, Move to adjourn. Motion. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.